Hello guys and welcome to a new video. Today I will show you this AKS74U from SEMA. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's start. Now the thing was made for tankers uh, in the Soviet Afghan war and it's actually still used in the Chechen Special Force Soviet Tetic. I really like this gun and I also like the real life counterpart. Now you get pretty much all you need in this package of the SEMA. You get a speed loader, you get two magazines, one high cap and one is a mid cap. Then you also get a um, adjustment tool for uh, like the uh, front side and of course you get the gun. It is made for tankers because it has the compact size of 500 millimeters when you fold it. As you can see I could probably use it as a pistol and 730 cent, uh, millimeters when it's unfolded. Now it's mostly made out of steel, but we will take a look at this in the part of the external quality and the materials. It also has a standard version 3 SEMA gearbox. We'll see that in the disassembling. The magazine takes, of course, six millimeter BBs and it has an adjustable hop-up under the charging handle. The weight of this short thing is 2.69 kilograms, so about 2.7 kilograms. This is very lightweight. As you can see, I can easily just take this with one hand. So this will not be a problem. It will of course get a little bit um, heavier with the Zenitko tuning if you want some. But right now the weight is pretty good. The barrel is 296 millimeters long, which is pretty good for a short rifle like that. This is probably because uh, it sticks out a little bit right here in the flash hider. As you can see, it doesn't really stop at the um, auto barrel, it just goes a little bit more out. Battery compartment is very easy, you just pop off the dust cover, which is spring loaded by the way, I love this. Then you pretty much got space for every AK stick type battery, it even fits more than my AK-105 from E&L, even though it's longer. So yeah, pretty cool. The high cap you get with it uh, takes 600 BBs and this mid cap right here takes 70 BBs. Now that was pretty much the technical details. Now let's come to the build quality and material parts. Let's start at the back. Right here on the back we have the normal triangle folder from the AKS. It is made out of steel, just completely made out of steel. Also the sling mount is out of steel right here. Now the next thing is uh, just really the whole receiver. Let's fold this up real quick and the button for the collapsing is out of steel. All those rivets are out of steel. The whole body is out of steel. Not this thing though, this is aluminium or some alloy, I don't know. This thing is out of... I think it's some kind of steel because it's a little bit magnetic and the release button for the dust cover is out of some other metal. The next thing is the dust cover. It is made out of steel 
completely the sides they are not made out of steel they are out of aluminium now of course the motor right here is just magnetic but the grip itself it is made out of plastic it's a pretty tough plastic next we got the magazine release latch it is completely made out of steel right here like this whole part it is made out of steel then the trigger itself is not made out of steel the trigger uh, guard it is out of steel the hand guard is of course out of wood as you can see the color is pretty beautiful in my opinion those holders for it they are out of steel on the back just like on the front no the the bottom one is not out of steel for some reason then this little spring inside here which i will show you in the disassembly it is out of steel then we got the um gas tube it's out of it's out of steel yep it's out of steel but not the side the side is out of some kind of alloy then the barrel is also not out of steel you can say this whole part right here it's not out of steel this is some kind of alloy then we got the flash hider all out of uh, steel so all in all for the price of like 100 dollars or a little bit above you get steel good build quality a nice magazine um this is already a sign why you should buy a sima now let's start with the disassembling first of all you have to get out the magazine of course to just do anything the next thing you should do is open the dust cover which will basically let me focus it will basically uh, drive a pin in and out right here you can see it pretty good I think right here this will allow you to open up the gas tube just like that and the next thing we should do is get out this this popped up for some reason already this is like the um, bolt spring just press it in a little bit get it up and remove it you can also just remove the bolt right here or the um, charging handle right there then then the next thing you should do is um, you got a little like it's a latch should fold it to this side and the spring will already push it out and that was the spring we was we were talking about right here out of steel and don't wonder this is some tape I just put in because it wobbles pretty much without it so we got the barrel free right here then you just remove the flash hider very easy you just push in this little pin and uh, just unscrew it the actual barrel is sticking out of the outer barrel a, li a little bit now the next thing is the pistol grip we have a little screw down here which we just have to unscrew when it's unscrewed you take out the little screw and slide off the pistol grip now you can see the motor 
very standard um, SEMA motor. Now the next thing is uh, you take a screwdriver and remove that fake rivet. That's actually just... Okay, it flew away. That's not bad. Um, as you can see right here, you just have a screw under that cap right here. You can just pop it on there again later. Now, just remove it. So, when you have on it unscrewed, you can just get off the fire selector and then those little things will just come. Um, the next thing you want to do is, normally, right here, you have two screws right there and on the other side, but as you can see, I didn't have them, which is very weird, but uh, it is what it is, so, already pretty much unscrewed. Here we go, and the next thing is uh, to remove the spacer right here, just for the, it's just a magazine spacer like on the end else. Yeah, and as you may see, it's very different from a standard uh, AK disassembly. Get this off right here. Of course, the tape sticks right here. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is get out um, this pin. You just gotta gotta give it a good um, tap okay so like I said get out this big pin right here just from here and then you can pretty much slide it out like that and then you got the outer barrel and the inner barrel right here and you can just slide out the gearbox and then you got your outer barrel right here. So it will probably happen that uh, these two parts will fall out. Um, very easy to fix, if you can call it a fix. Um, pretty much just get in this hole into this pin, make sure it slides in this, um, yeah, make sure it slides and then go ahead and get this right here, just like that and you got your fire selector again. Okay. This is the AK when you have disassembled it. Now you just really have the standard uh, V3 gearbox. I will not disassemble it right now. I am looking for building this AK into a nice Zenitka AK. And if you don't want to miss something like that, you can of course subscribe. Now the sides are the standard AKS74U sides. Uh, not everyone likes them and I can definitely understand it. Um, I mean, therefore you got your uh, rail mount right here, so you can mount some new optics. Now you got that little tool to adjust the front side in height and that was pretty much it. Now I will show you how the side looks.
Now let's come to the trigger response and shooting sound. Uh, both is very bad because I don't have a MOSFET inside it right now, but I will show it to you anyways. Uh, and I can't really shoot uh, full auto right now because uh, I can't really shoot semi auto right now because um, the battery is very strong and um, the energy is too low. Now I'll show you. Now we do semi auto. As you can hear, it shoots burst pretty much. But yeah, uh, that was the trigger response test. Now what can I say about this gun else than I really like it? I can say you don't always have to buy the more expensive stuff to get happy. And that's not your motivation to buy a $50 gun instead of a $100 gun or something. But it's your motivation to maybe buy a $100 gun instead of a $300 gun. If you don't really mind if there's not only steel, if you know what I mean, like the Intel and SEMA stuff. Of course, Intel feels better, looks better in some cases, but I have to say I'm actually more happy with the SEMA than with the Intel. And that's mostly because the SEMA is much more compatible with this LCT Z series, like that foregrip and um, you have the real dust curve, for example, that's not there for the E and L's, but for the CMOS. And it is more lightweight, like, it doesn't feel toyish, but it's more lightweight. You can easily hold it like that the whole day. I got the whole day. Now that was pretty much the video. As you can see, my outfits changed. And that is mostly because I recorded it over three days. and. As you can imagine, that is quite a long time also to cut. So I would really, really appreciate a subscribe and a like. So I got nothing else to say, then see you next time.